Wow, what beautiful roses. What type is this? A lasting peace rose. Beautiful. Oh, finally some peace. Gosh, I finally need to get some peace away from all this studying for the DAT. Will it ever end? Oh, beautiful. Oh, is there an artist here today? Oh. Uh-oh. Is that you again, Dr. Romano? I saw you here yesterday. I'm here every day doing new problems. Well, I didn't get time to study yesterday. I came to look at the roses again. Is that all right? Actually, it's not okay because I think you should pay very close attention to what I'm going to show you. It's a nice medley of some very important nomenclature types of questions that you are likely to see on an exam such as your dad coming up soon. Oh, yeah? I can expect if I know this, will I get a perfect 30? Probably not, but you better make sure you do know it because the dad has a lot more than nomenclature, but this is a good start. So let's get right to it. All right. There's four problems here. The first problem is a simple alkene. And what we're going to do is we're going to number the longest chain that contains the alkene group. So as you can see, I'm going to number the chain as follows. Now, off position number four is a bromine. So I'm going to call this 4-bromo. And then off the number two carbon is a methyl. So it's 4-bromo, 2-methyl, 1-pentene. I need to say one pentene because I need to know where the position of that double bond is. The double bond is between number one and two. So putting it all together, we get a four bromo, two methyl, one pentene. Now, the second example, we have two functional groups. The alcohol has greater priority in nomenclature than the alkene group. So the alkene group is not going to be my priority, but the alcohol is. So as you can see, I number the longest chain, and this time, you can see that the double bond is between four and five, and the alcohol group is on number two. So what I would do is call this four hexene two all. Notice I dropped the E, so four hexene means the double bond is between four and five, the OH is on two. So as you can see, it's four hexene two all. Now, to the finishing touch, is the double bond an E or a Z? A nice easy way to do it is if you put an invisible H in. There's an H here and there's an H here. You can see that this group goes above the H, this group goes below the H, so that makes it an E. So putting it all together, this compound would be called E for hexen to all. The third example shows you a nice compound that's a ring structure. And as you can see, if this wasn't here, you would have just called it cyclohexene. But as you can see, we're going to number the carbons. So number one and two both have the double bond. This is three, and this would be four. So we would call this four. This group up here is called the iso. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. This would be four isopropyl cyclo. Hexene, four isopropyl cyclohexene. Notice if it's a ring, we didn't have to say four isopropyl, one cyclohexene. That would just be superfluous, and we don't need to do that. Now for the tsunami. This is a hard one. This is not for the faint of heart. I've thrown a lot of different functional groups in here. There's an alkene here, there's an OH here, there's a carboxy acid here. For your purposes, for the dad, and probably for the rest of your life. No other group will have a higher priority than a carboxylic acid. So that group is number one. That means that every other group here is a substituent. What do I see here? Well, I'm going to pick the longest chain. And as you can see, five, six, seven, eight, we get nine carbons. Now, off of three, there's a hydroxy. Off of five, there's a bromo. And off of seven, there's a methyl. So we're going to go in alphabetical order now. It's 5-bromo, 3-hydroxy, 7-methyl, 8, because the double bond is at 8, nonine, notice because it's an alkene, nonine oic acid. Yeah, it's a mouthful. One more time, this is 5-bromo, 3-hydroxy, 
7-methyl-8-no-ninoic acid. Now, I tell all my students this, even if you're not this good, and you might say to yourself, I don't know if I could have named that question, at least say to yourself, if this was a multiple choice exam, could you have at least eliminated the choices to get to the right answer? And the minute you would have saw it's nine carbons, you would have known it's a nonenic acid. Um, for the simple reason, because there's nine carbons and it's a carboxylic acid, you would have recognized the group off of three is a hydroxy, five is a bromo, and you could have eliminated some choices. All right, get to work on a problem like that. Because if you can do a problem like that, you should have no problem on the dot. It should be a lot simpler than that. But this is a really good type of problem. All right, I hope this helps and gives you some direction. And just remember, sometimes if you can't bag a question, at least you can get it by the process of elimination. Certainly, you would not have called this an octinoic acid, because oc is eight, and this is nine. All right, I hope wow, that gives Dr. you Wow, Dr. Romano, help. you've really simplified that for me. I think I, I follow you now. Are you going to be out here tomorrow? Most likely, I will. Good day to you. Okay. Well, I won't be here. Bye-bye.